May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning. How many of you have dogs? Dogs? Do you know that when the pandemic hit and people were required to stay home and they lost connection with each other and with family and lost their abilities to be in community, the shelters emptied and people that had not had dogs in years had dogs. And people that had one dog had two dogs. And without it being advertised or promoted or without there being um, uh, stations for people to come by and see the poor homeless dogs that needed to be adopted, something innate within us drove us to build a connection with one of God's creatures. It wasn't specific to any particular religion or denomination or spiritual belief practice, but a phenomenon across our country, at least, I didn't look at the statistics for the world, but a phenomenon in our country drove people to the animal shelters to get a companion with creation. That's interesting. Yesterday, we were at the Nocatee Farmer's Market, and uh, in three hours, we blessed 55 dogs and one very unhappy cat. <laughs> and as I was thinking about my sermon this morning, and I was in the process of those three hours, I realized that there was a preface to the real, what I consider to be the real message of our gospel and actually the Old Testament reading too. And so I thought that I would share with you some of the observations that I had yesterday in the blessing of the animals. Um, in the 55 dogs that came, they were all shapes, sizes, breeds, ages, and their owners were the same. They're human companions. The first dog that received a blessing was at the Friends of St. John's County next door, and it was a lovely um, shepherd mix that was at on its leash a sign that said, take me home. And the story is that the, the dog's family had had to move, and it wasn't able, they weren't able to move with the dog. And so the dog was in need of a family. And so we gave the dog a blessing and prayed for the family to be found. The dog was very standoffish. It's going to be a hard time finding a family for this dog. He's older. He's not cute and cuddly anymore. And he's quite frankly not very friendly. I can't really say that I blame him. He's been abandoned and neglected by his human companions. But yet, even though he didn't seek out the interaction, when I got down at eye level and looked into his eyes and I made the sign of the cross on his forehead, he looked at me with those deep brown eyes and somehow there was a connection and there was a knowing. And the dog responded. So if somebody can look past his history and look into those eyes, the dog will find a home. That's how we started. And then came the oodles of poodle mixes that the, the designer dogs that everybody needs has now. And then came puppies. And then came older dogs. The oldest, I think, was 14. But all of their owners, all, the, all their human companions came with them 
And the mixed reaction to the question of would you like a blessing for your dog was pretty profound. Lots of people, certainly some people from the parish who knew we were there came and came with their dogs, and that was a wonderful treat. But there were people from all over the community who came for balloons, interestingly enough, because they sold, we, we sold out, gave out balloons very early in the process. Um, but when, when we ask them, could we bless your animal, people from different perspectives of life and religion bases, um, some were confused, but said okay. And so we blessed, the, we blessed the dog, and the dog reacted in whatever way it did. Sometimes it was wiggly and squiggly, and sometimes it just received it completely. The owners received a blessing too. Because whatsoever you do unto the least of them, you do also for me. And the extension of our relationship as humans to our dogs, they're an extension of us. And so, in so many ways, by being able to give a blessing to somebody's dog, who may not be willing to accept the blessings of God in general, if they would receive it. But you know, there were a handful of people, maybe five or six, who when I asked him, would you like a blessing for your dog? They said, no. My dog is good. And I said, yep, yeah, you're right. Your dog is absolutely good. <laughs> they would come and take the water, which was great, so we could bless the dog by giving the dog its water. But they couldn't receive a blessing. Something has happened in their life, in their world, in their mind, in their experience that builds a wall to receiving a blessing from the church. But it doesn't stop God from blessing them because God blessed them with a dog. And did you know that there are seven primary emotional systems that all mammals share? Love, care, fear, rage, the desire to, for creation, generation, procreation, nurturing. If we are made in God's image, and if God made us and all of creation, then can we assume that if we share these primary emotional systems with the animal world, with the, with the, the natural world, with, with all mammals, that we also share them with God? Father Richard Rohr, a, a wonderful Franciscan priest who, who runs the Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has been doing a piece this week on um, seeing God in creation and experiencing the faithfulness, the loyalty, the connection with our creator through the relationship with our creation. And I really got to experience that yesterday in the 55 dogs. And I also got to experience how we really can't get in the way of the blessing of God. The one angry cat, not thrilled about being in a crate, not thrilled about being out in the sun, but came in came in the crate, crate had some holes in it. I looked, peered down into the crate through the holes. Cat's ears were flat back and, and eyes were narrow and it just looked at me like, I dare you. I dare you, lady, I dare you. And I said, you know what? We're gonna do a blessing from out here. <laughs> so I put my hands over the crate and I said the blessing. And there was nothing that cat could do to keep that blessing from eking in to the holes. And I think about that. How many times do we 
put up a barrier and approach the blessings of God with our ears flat back and inside a, a, a hard crate because something's happened in our life that makes us stand offish to whatever is prepared for us. But yet, nothing can keep us from the blessing that God has for us. Even for those who said, no, I don't want you to bless my dog. I don't want whatever it is you're offering. The engagement and the acceptance of whatever it was they chose was a blessing in and of itself. So it takes us to our scripture for today. Two pieces of scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, both show something similar. They're very different stories, very different exchanges. The context of the, of the piece from Job is Job, if you know, if you are familiar with the, with the book of Job, uh, the whole book of Job is about this test of Job and his faithfulness and this dialogue between God and Satan about, about human faithfulness and, and, and this argument that humans are fallible, and we are, and that, that, that humans are only faithful if what you give us is good. And so Job goes through horrible, horrible experiences. And, he, and he's ridiculed and all kinds of things happen to him. And the, this passage today, just prior to that, Job had finally let go of the God he put on a pedestal. And he had finally had a real heart-to-heart -heart outrage at what was happening at him. He'd finally let go of the image of God that he was in relationship with and let his true feelings be known. And God came back at him. And the exchange just prior to this one and this one from God demonstrates a real relationship between creation and the creator. Where Job had let God have it, and God gave it back. And, and in our human relationships, as long as we have someone on a pedestal or something on a pedestal, we don't necessarily have a real relationship. And we don't, we don't have the depth of relationship until the honeymoon is over and we've had our first fight. We've had our first falling out in human relationships. It's actually true in human-animal relationships, too. It's not really a real relationship until you come into the conflict that you can't really work through without having some help. So in the Old Testament, we see that, that the real relationship began with, jo with God and Job, and the restoration began when the pretenses were let go of and when they, they had honest communication with each other. We go to the New Testament, completely different story, completely different scenario. But we see that James and John, who've been with Jesus and they've, they've been in the miracles, they've seen everything, they have gone through it, but they still are having a relationship with their projection of who and what they want Jesus to be. And we know that because they ask to be, they ask for favoritism. In, in spite of everything, in spite of all that has gone on and what they've witnessed, they go to Jesus and ask, move us to the head of the line. Put one of us on one side of you and one of us on the other. Elevate us over the other ten. So they clearly missed the point of the ministry they had been following around because they still had this ego drive to be better than everybody else. And clearly what Jesus' ministry had said was serve. And so he asked him, 
well, are you able to drink from my cup and are you able to accept my baptism? And not knowing what he was talking about, oh, yes, we are, absolutely. We got this. We can do it. Sure, we're worthy. We're worthy. Now, knowing now what, what, what happened, <laughs> the cup that he was talking about and the baptism that he was talking about was the cup and a baptism of his crucifixion and of the role that he played in our lives. But for all the time that, that James and John were with him, they still were holding on to the projection of what they wanted this experience to be, not what it really was. So I put these two pieces together because it is very difficult. If it was difficult for James and John when they were walking with Christ 2,000 plus years ago, I have to presume it's difficult for us today. We're not walking with Christ. We're walking with the Bible. We're walking with human. We're walking with doctrine. We're walking with faith. We have to walk with faith. And it's hard to have a relationship and not know how much of that is our projection of what we want it to be versus what it really is. But I bring it, I bring it back around to having a relationship with creation. And if we are having a relationship with creation, we are having a relationship with God. We're having a relationship with the Creator. The human aspect of creation is the only animal that has the ability to deceive. Everything else that is alive and living and breathing and growing, every other mammal and everything else, has no choice but to be plugged in to the Creator. We are the only animal that has the choice. And so, if you're not sure about where you are in the relationship to God, or where you are, if you're not getting what you thought you should be getting, or not connected to the relationship with God as you, or Jesus, the way that you perceive them to be. Finding relationship in the animal kingdom, and finding relationship in nature was something that Francis and Claire was a rock of their way of being in the world. And so I would invite you to join with me and anybody else, and clearly an entire community of people that have no ties to religion at all, may or may not have ties to religion, found that when they desperately needed connection. They went to have connection with the creation. And with our connections, with our faith, with our church, with our doctrine, it's that we have that option too. Amen.